John Calvin on Psalm 18, verses 7 through 19. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken, because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. David, convinced that the aid of God, which he had experienced, was of a character that it was impossible for him to extol it sufficiently as it deserved, set forth an image of it in the sky and the earth, as if he had said, it has been as visible as the changes which give different appearances to the sky and to the earth. If natural things always flowed in an even and uniform course, the power of God would not be so perceptible. But when he changes the face of the sky by sudden rain or by loud thunder or by dreadful tempests, those who before were, as it were, asleep and insensible must necessarily be awaked and be tremblingly conscious of the existence of a presiding God. Such sudden and unforeseen changes manifest more clearly the presence of the great author of nature. No doubt, when the sky is unclouded and tranquil, we see in it sufficient evidence of the majesty of God. But as men will not stir up their minds to reflect upon that majesty until it come nearer to them, David, the more powerfully to affect us, recounts the sudden changes by which we are usually moved and dismayed. In short, the object of the psalmist is to show that the God who, as often as he pleases, causes all parts of the world to tremble by his power when he intended to manifest himself as the deliverer of David, was known as openly and by signs as evident as if he had, been, as if he had displayed his power in all the creatures, both above and beneath. David does not here relate this as a piece of history or as what had actually taken place, but he employs these similitudes for the purpose of removing all doubt and for the greater confirmation of faith as to the power and providence of God, because men, from their slowness of understanding, cannot apprehend God except by means of external signs.